friends in today's lecture we are going to discuss about computer fundamentals actually we are doing a series of c language where we are going to solve the programs algorithms and flowcharts of that c language for certain period of time then we are going to execute our programs i will show it to you how to write a program and how to execute a program but before that try to understand the basic concepts of c and before learning c try to understand the basic concepts of computer so in today's lecture we are going to discuss about computer fundamentals so my name is sachin chowan and i am going to teach you how to execute a program of c so let's begin why to learn c is the basic question so now before learning c we need to understand the computers first so there is the first topic what is a computer so computer is nothing but a electronics device okay computer is nothing but an electronics device which manipulates manipulates means it does a certain work or certain processes on data and gives you certain kind of output now that certain kind of output means anything we can call it as an information we can call it as something else but certain kind of output it is given by the computer so an electronics device which manipulates information or data and it can perform other operations also it can store the values it can retrieve the values or it can process the values values here we can call it as an data data is nothing but an unstructured form of values the difference between data and information is somewhat different there is data it's unprocessed values and information is nothing but an processed values okay so computer becomes an electronics device which manipulates information or a data which can store the data which can retrieve the data and which can process the data to give us a certain kind of output okay now there are two again definitions comes two words hardware and software where hardware is nothing but a physical structure means when you see a computer you see a hardware the thing to which you can touch by your hand becomes hardware okay and the thing which you cannot touch by your hand becomes a software it is the general definition of hardware and software but the physical structure of a computer becomes your hardware for example keyboard mouse or all the computers internal part means like uh, structure of a keyboard or a structure of a memory that is called as a hardware so software is nothing but a set of instructions what it is a set of instruction which tells the hardware what to do and how to do it okay for example web browsers I mean you can google something you can google something in your google box and google finds the particular image or a video which becomes an output means when you tell your computer to search something that means you are giving command you are using hardware now computer finding that particular video and showing it to you that means computer finding that video becomes your processing and computer giving you an output or shows that video becomes your output of that video so note that computer will rely on both hardware and software means when the combination of software and hardware is there you can call it as a computer okay so simultaneously both are working both are dependent on each other without dependency there is no computer there so for example let's see software and hardware this is on hardware you can touch this is a software this is a powerpoint presentation image or anything you can find on your computer's uh, screen that becomes a software and this is just an example now what are the different types of computers there are many types of computers but in real life we see generally a desktop a laptop a tablets a servers smartphones that means your mobiles and wearables means a google class or something like that these are the nothing but a type of computers now organization of computer is the main fundamental so now find 
let's see what is an organization of computer in this topic we are trying to understand the instructions means what is exactly an instruction means or what exactly an instruction do so isa where instruction set architecture is something uh, which we need to learn so let's see instruction is nothing but it's an abstraction abstraction means it's hidden abstraction means its execution is hidden so that is called as an abstraction it is above the digital logic level above the digital logic levels means the binary level zeros and ones it is above the digital logic levels and below the operating system it is below the operating system okay this is like this we can call it like this means operating system is the higher end device then the, there are instructions which are lower than operating system and there is then zeros and ones means assembly level language that is uh, lowest level of organization of computer so this this kind of structure is there so instructions are nothing but the intermediary between operating systems and zeros and ones okay so uh, there are certain part of organization of computers that is cpu called as central processing unit then there is memory then there is input devices or output devices then there are storage devices like pen drives and there are communication devices okay so let's see in this diagram we are going to see the structure of an computer where there is a memory there is a central processing unit there is a keyboard there is a monitor and there are certain input and output devices where input and output devices means input from which we are giving input to the computer outputs means from which we are getting our output that is output devices okay where keyboard becomes your input device and where your monitor becomes your output device that's why these arrows are structured like this then there is a central processing unit uh, central processing unit which controls or which depends on your memory to work then there is a punch card printed reports tap storage and disk storage where punch card is nothing but an input device that's why arrow is a singular printed reports becomes your output that's why arrow is singular tap storage arrow is a bidirectional means you can uh, save the data you can retrieve the data then there is disk storage that means hard disk it's also bidirectional that means you can store and retrieve the data at the same time now the basic organization of computers like this where each arrows moving in a direction shows the processing of, or the travel of that data like input unit goes to control unit control unit performs operation on that particular data or input and then it gives output to the output unit okay now there is a memory unit also input unit gives data to the memory unit means it can store the data memory unit can also go uh, finds the output like we are going to retrieve the data from that memory unit that's why the arrow is like this or where cpu that is called as central processing unit or it is also called as a brain of a computer system consists of two parts control unit and the arithmetic logic unit where arithmetic logic unit performs the operations of calculations which performs the operation of calculation and where control unit is just to control or process the data okay so cpu where arithmetic logic unit uh, is attached to the memory unit because arithmetic logic unit needs the data from the memory unit it is connected directly with the control unit as control unit uh, performs the operation of alu and then it gives to the output unit this is the basic organization of computer now just find or uh, just try to understand the concepts we have said before cpu called as central processing unit which is also called as a brain of a computer system okay then it is also called as processor central processor or a microprocessor it is developed first by the intel okay with the help of ted hoff is the name of a person who invented the cpu in 1970s at intel okay now what central processor unit does it is responsible for handling all the instructions means all the instruction like addition subtraction multiplication are nothing but an instructions which can be handled only by cpu okay and mainly these 
instructions are handled by ALU which is the part of CPU ok now it receives the instruction from hardware and software running on the computer who receives the instructions the central process unit receives the instruction from the hardware or the software we are running on the computers means we click a mouse that becomes an instruction to the CPU ok if we double click on my computer my computer icon gets open that means we are clicking or we are inputting a com computer to show us the my computer files so inputting or double clicking means the input and the computer which generates the or uh, shows us the computer files becomes your output now CPU performs all type of data processing operations all type of data processing operations mean there are type of data which type of data like a character data like a numerical data or integer values or a floating point values this kind of data is there so CPU can perform all type of data operations then it stores the data intermediate the result and instructions are there we have said it before only now CPU itself has an ALU that is arithmetic logic unit for the calculation purpose there is a memory unit which can store your data and instructions that's why it is known as a memory unit and there is a control unit which can perform operations like input output or something like that then there is a memory memory what memory is memory is a nothing but a physical device what memory is is a physical device which is capable of storing your information temporarily or permanently okay so temporary is a ram memory random access memory what it is uh, we are going to discuss it later computer memory divided into two parts a volatile memory and a non volatile memory a volatile memory becomes your temporary memory that means when light goes off or your computer gets shut down the data which we are working on gets lost that is a volatile memory and example of volatile memory is ram next is non volatile memory non volatile memory means uh, if the power goes your data is there in your memory uh, for example ROM and EPROM are the best examples of non volatile read only memory and electronically programmable read only memory are the two types now input devices and output devices we have said it earlier also but let's see input devices are used to insert data okay it's also used to supply the information to the computers and uh, the mostly used input devices are keyboards and clicks keyboards and mic uh, your mouse are the majorly in well known input devices there are other input devices also like keyboard mouse scanners digital cameras and joysticks now let's move to the output devices output devices is used to display the result from computer to receive information from computer that is the work of an output device the picture shows from an inkjet printer is nothing but your output from your computer there are uh, other also there are printer and there is a monitor this scanner is not an output device it's just an input device basic function of a computer is input it performs the operations process and there is an output process is a bad action process goes to the output also and process comes from your storage also now characteristics of a computer systems there is a memory automation reliability versatility vigilance accuracy and speed we are going to this one by one vigilance that means computer can perform million of task millions of tasks with the same consistency and the accuracy okay that is vigilance then versatility different kind of work means like a character operations or like a floating point operation or integer value addition uh, these are nothing but an examples of different kind of works computer performs a different kind of work with the same accuracy and efficiency with the same means if you are solving character in 10 seconds you are going to solve your integer also in 10 seconds that is the work of a computer that's why the same accuracy and efficiency reliability that means you are going to rely on your computer for the good result or a correct result that is the reliability so computer always shows you the correct result automation that means it is automatically gets perform your work that is automation memory memory is sharper than human memory means it can store the values that human brain cannot able to store that value so memory is the good thing 
computer is having so in today's lecture this is the last point we are going to discuss input processing output cycle where inputting processing storing and outputting are just the steps of this cycle let's see in this diagram it shows the input there are all the devices are as an input then there is cpu means processing unit where cpu central processing unit consists of alu arithmetic unit cu for control unit and the registers for performing your operations then there is a memory that is rom permanent memory and there is the ram temporary memory it's bidirectional that means you can store the value you can store your data you can retrieve your data you can retrieve your values also then after the processing is done you are going to see your output here like monitor speaker and printer let's see one by one inputting that means if let's see an example of an input process output cycle if we need the addition of 5 and 10 okay if we need an addition of 5 and 10 where inputting means entering the values to the computer so if I need the addition of 5 and 10 so I am going to input 5 and 10 here okay that means this becomes my inputting then my, there is a processing that means manipulation of data I need to do the addition of 5 and 10 so processing where ALU or the CU control unit or the, you can say the CPU there are synonyms for each one performs the operations like 5 plus 10 becomes 15 this is operation done by your CPU that is called as a processing step then we are going to storing the values that means if I need that output later on I am going to store that 15 value somewhere in your my, in my hard disk and that becomes storing in this uh, cycle then there is an outputting outputting means till now this all process is done in back of my eyes or back of my computer now I need to see what the end result is so my computer shows 15 is the result on my screen that is my output so in this uh, manner we learned the input process output input output cycle so I hope you understand this topic well in the next lecture we are going to discuss some part of an algorithm and uh, some part of an flow chart and after that we are going to start our basic concepts of C so hope you understand this topic thank you so much